What is up guys, McDouble's back again with a brand new video and today we're going to be jumping right back on the Demolisher Fellforge character from our last video doing more PvP in the open world, risk fights, so I hope you guys enjoy, let's jump right in. So right now I'm just doing my Fellwood daily. I have found two people so far and both of them were pretty easy fights. In fact, the last one you guys probably saw uh, was the one where I literally one shot somebody for the most part. It was like a Wind Fury proc and they were dead. So um, build's doing good. Obviously when I see somebody with 7, 8k HP, I know I'm about to fight somebody that's bordering or has Nax gear or some high level PvP stuff. And then I become to them what those people were to me, which is like free loot but luckily those people tend to stick to bgs in arena now from what i can see and there aren't as many of them in fell forged mode another marley's touch but there you go as you can see two quests done including a pvp quest where we had to kill three players so doing pretty good at max level probably the most fun i've had at max level in fell forge in a while and a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's arena and stuff i have been doing arena just for fun messing with different specs pretty abysmal win loss but i'll take it because it's positive for now but i'm enjoying myself and that's what matters it's also important to keep in mind that like i said when you do arena that's where you find those 7 8k hp massive amounts of gear on players type of people and you know what when you're in world pvp you're getting more equal or even above for you type of fights so i like the world pvp because there's also going to be another upside which is going to be the loot that you get but anyway that's two quests one of which just gave me 10 gold this one gives me a twisted legion fall cash and 125 gold just for doing a daily Let's go ahead and open this and see what we get. Oh my god, that's a lot of epics. I can already tell right off the bat that this is nothing that I want, but it's definitely stuff I could put on the AH, right? So Cloak of Consumption, Bang of the Faceless, Lawbringer Leg Place, that's pretty solid, uh, Sash of Whispered Secrets, and that's the best stuff. I love the changes they've made to Fellforge mode so much. I think the game mode is finally standalone, uh, and they can only do more with it, right? They can only make it better. I also wonder if when a future game mode comes out, will there be Fellforge mode in that? That would be interesting. You, like, pick a class and then pick Fellforge mode just so you could be, like, a demon and be evil and, well, play a PvP mode. I don't hate it. It's weird, it's different, but hell, that's what makes Ascension fun. It's weird and different, but still wow. But anyway, as you can see, still got some stuff to sell, but a lot of it has already sold. I still kind of want to use this Thunderstrike. I'm going to be completely honest with you. If it wasn't strength-based and I wasn't agi-based, I would be using it right now just for the memes. So since my last video, I've probably spent like 750 gold on stuff, and I just opened up some mail. Lots of things are still coming in. Few things didn't sell and I'm just gonna vendor it off I think uh, but we're up to 902 even after spending so much gold so money is no issue and god I love that for once it feels like everything I've been asking for in Fellforge mode and by I I even really do mean us but the fact of the matter is all these different things I've been asking for where they just give us the things we need to play the game so we can play it and do what we want it's it's happened man it's literally happened golden skill cards Arena and BGs, I don't know how to do the BG part yet, but at least Arena right now with Fellforged mode. The quests were made easier with Fellforged mode, that was a complaint that I had, that the quests were egregiously long and uh, in, in some cases just like way, way, way too long. Because why am I doing PvE so consistently in my PvP game mode, so they fix that. But just so many things that over the last year I advocated for and it's happened, and look at this. 
we are well deep into the season and there's still so many people playing this game mode. This is not something you could say before the changes happened that I wanted. I am so freaking psyched, guys. You have no idea. Just killed another guy and completely forgot to record it. But here's the loot. I'll at least show you guys the loot. Quite a lot of epics. Cauterizing Band. That's going to be a solid one, too. That's item level 71. So they can uh, try to work past Blackwing Lair. Treasure loot with that ring. I'll take it. I'll try to be more diligent about getting these <laughs> kills in, guys. I just randomly dropped down into my usual farm spot, and somebody was there. They put up a good fight. I misplayed, won't lie, uh, but still came out on top, so I'll take it. And that ring is not as good as I thought it would be in terms of price. Uh, perhaps that one guy that has it up there should have put it up for more, but it hasn't sold yet, to be completely fair. We'll undercut a little bit, and uh, let's put everything else up as well. I've also gone ahead and updated some of my REs. I have Zephyr now, which we've talked about in previous videos, but it makes my Wind Fury hit for even more uh, with a proc chance once I get enough stacks to where I get two extra attacks on a Wind Fury. So that's quite a lot of hits all in one. Hunter vs. Wild, 9% of my AP, uh, or 9% of my stamina rather, goes towards AP. Death or Glory, used it a couple times, but never to, you know, max level fruition. But basically, it makes it where my last stand ability, you can see it right here, it gives me a bunch of HP for a short period of time. What it does is it also dispels all magic effects off of me and gives me 10% increased melee attack power, attack speed, and movement speed. But, uh, of course, I halve the duration of Last Stand as a direct result of this. I do think it's quite good, though, so that's nice as well. I didn't really go over my build much in the last video, but essentially I'm going Demolishing Strike, Mongoose Bite, Rend, OP. We have Whirlwind just because we got it. Uh, it's been good uh, occasionally to dump extra rage uh, or just for AoE. Immolation Trap, not as bad as you think because we are agility skills. Scaling, and so that's going to give it the RAP that it needs. We went with both Hunger for Blood and Death Wish for 20% increased physical damage on players, but the new Hunger for Blood also gives me movement speed, which is very, very nice. It only requires a bleed, which we have two of. Battle Shouts. Blessing of Sanctuary with the Wind Fury. We're a dwarf, obviously, and we have the Hammer of Justice and the Intimidating Shout. So once we get a little bit of rage, we can fear them, and we have Disarm. So after we get a little bit of rage, we can also disarm them. We also have the Sprint, and we have Mass Dispel, but we haven't had an opportunity to use it outside of Arena yet. So it's overall a pretty solid build, and I think that's part of why things have been going so well for me. The Demolisher build is quite good at 60. My other character didn't turn out great, so I'm glad I was able to use a Demolisher build on this character so I could show you guys the true power of it. My spec basically just goes as much into crit and AP as possible. I'm mostly in the Arms Warrior tree, as you can see. Increasing all of my physical damage and two-handed damage that I can with things like two-handed weapon spec, but also grabbing as much crit as I can with things like Cruelty. And, of course, the AP with, like, armor to the teeth. And we have uh, lightning reflexes for more agi, which is more AP. And the two-handed weapon mastery for 6% more physical damage. That's quite good as well. And actually, I just switched over my lightning reflexes to Hunter vs. Wild because I think I meant to do that to begin with. So that's going to increase my attack power by another 20% of my total stamina, which was an increase over the other talent, putting me at 1170, but losing me about 0.4-ish crit. Not too big of a deal, I think. So overall, a pretty solid character. You know, this is considered a group quest, this demon contract assault on Masteril, but these things are super easy to fight. Low-key, I was kind of hoping to find like a lot of maybe like 5.5k-ish HP players here. I think if they're slightly undergeared, I can completely dominate two people, especially if they're both casters or even if they're both melee because I have disarm. But nope, nobody's here. So I'm going to fight the Mage Weavers outside, clear up some scale banes, and this should be a pretty easy group quest soloed. Look at that. No problem at all. I will say the loot off these elites is complete garbage. I was getting way better stuff killing the non-elite furbolgs in the last video. But I'm not sure what to make of that. I kind of wish elites were more guaranteed to give you better stuff. Could just be that I'm unlucky though. I don't want to leave that out of the equation. Maybe these guys typically do drop really good stuff. And I just, you know, <laughs> I'm McDoubles, man. <laughs> it is what it is. The one thing I recently took up as a hobby is archery. Recurve bows, long bows, I'm trying to learn it all, trying to learn it on my own just by, you know, studying how to be an archer, the proper form and all that, but not really getting shown by anybody. So far, it's going great, and it's a freaking awesome hobby, right, to help keep fit. All right, one more cobalt scale bane, probably in this cave somewhere. There we go. This was me basically testing to see if these group classified quests were possible um to do solo looks like they are massive rewards for it as well including that legion fall cash let's see what we get holy crap 
Blood-soaked leg plates. Earthshaker. Wow, what a cool one, man. What an absolutely cool one. Crimson Shocker. Oh, that's a wand. And Silithid Hide Gloves. Not too bad. I'm going to put this stuff up on the auction house. And yeah, maybe we'll go for another group quest. I actually made the executive decision to keep my Earthshaker for a future run. I've also done that with a little bit of other gear. Nothing amazing, honestly. But the Savage Glad Chain, right? Nat Piggle's Fish Terminator, because it's just so freaking cool. Um, you know, an arm's weight cloak. Just some basic stuff just to keep it in there ready for me. I also picked up some pretty interesting skill cards recently that could play towards future builds. Shadow Word Death being one that I definitely want to get my hands on, but also Avenging Wrath for when TBC comes out. Perhaps this coupled with, I think I have a Holy Shock Golden, uh, that would be quite good, I think, for some kind of Holy build, specifically one that uses Might. But of course, Holy Fire is better, 9 times out of 10. And I don't have that as a golden yet. But, you know, we have some pretty okay stuff. Golden card disengage, maybe a paratrooper build. But I'd want to get a regular skill card multi-shot for that, not the golden one. So I can also use thought off barrel and just other multi-shot using things. It's basically the linchpin of range builds, I believe. And now that you can pick any talented ability you want, these Storm Strike and Lava Lash cards I've been keeping kind of suck. I mean, I just don't see a universe where I'd want to use these when I can pick them at max and go for things that I can't pick. The, I have a Holy Fire card, but if I use this, I can't use the Avenging Wrath, and that definitely does suck. We also have Frost Shock and Frost Brand Weapon, but they're both the same skill card. However, both would play towards perhaps getting a Frost Hybrid build going for TBC, which is definitely going to be meta. I've actually been saving the concept after I talked to that friend of mine from the uh, Area 52 battles, I think, or maybe it was Wild Hammer. Haven't forgot about you, do plan to use that if I get the right cards on this realm. Also got Succubus, which could be interesting. But yeah, we have a bunch of good loot in here that we've been saving. You know, I probably might want to plan to uh, reset sometime soon. But really, there's no motivation because I can just keep having fun doing BGs in Arena. So maybe I'll just look for more people to fight and not worry too much about it. I'm actually going to go ahead and put one more bag in here too. I don't know why I haven't done that already. 100 souls, that's not a big deal. Good. I definitely needed that. Now we have more space. Speaking of that, you know what? Let's go ahead and open some skill cards and see if we get anything. I'm going to open some goldens as well because we're doing so well with actual gold. It's not a big deal. But let's go ahead and do 10 of each and see if we can get something good for the future. Barrel Charge. That might actually be good. Um, I think I have a golden skill card for Ravage. And so if I do end up pulling cat form on somebody, I think there you go. But yeah, I do have right here the golden card for Ravage. So that's... By the way, my cat form build just waiting in my bank. I just need to roll it now on a character. And that might take a bit, guys. That might be a summer project right there. Still haven't forgot about it, but you know what? I have about two more weeks of hardcore work, one more week of mild work, and then I'm actually going to have a lot of free time, and you're going to see more videos. Which reminds me, if you've heard of my other channel, The Millennial, and you want to check that out too, go ahead. I'm going to post things on, like, philosophy, religion, history, anthropology, literally anything. And yeah, we'll talk about it. But anyway, guys, here's where you can buy the specific skill cards you want just for gold. It's 5,000 gold for the skill card you want. That's really not too terrible considering how easy it is to make gold now. Now, we didn't get anything great. Adrenaline Rush and Create Soul Stone at the end. So I'm going to put all of this in my bank for future reference. I think we did pretty good overall, though. Some new things that we could possibly play in the future. But for now, I'm really loving this character. So let's go ahead and keep playing him. All right, here's a Legion Cache. I'm looking for people to fight right now. Oh, yes, dude. Another thick silithid chest guard. Just a solid one, man. 69 item level. You really can't beat that. I kind of want to put some of this stuff in my bank now, too. Maybe not the Jeklix, but definitely the chest guard for future reference. And maybe the Shadowcraft boots, too. Maybe the Swift Walker is better. Who knows? Maybe both. All right, but nobody's here, so I'm going to check new places where dailies tend to happen and see if anybody's there. All right, here's somebody that's going to end up being a free kill. There's a stun to break the evasion. And, GG, dude. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, a Eye of a Hakar. A Zinrock, dude. Silencer, big bads. Jimmied handcuffs. I will take it. Oh, I have the Demonic Rage random enchant. That might actually sell. There's no copy of it on here. And if someone wants to play a demon build, they need it. So let's throw it up. Maybe 25G. And also, I forgot about this ring of spell power. That is 33 SP on a ring. Yeah. I knew I could get something for that. Maybe another 25. Pretty good. Look at that, guys. I've been looking for this one for a while. Insatiable for 350 gold. 
This makes it where Taste for Blood increases the damage of Overpower by 20% up to 3 times. Using Overpower consumes all of it. It's basically just free damage. However, I am low because I bought those golden skill cards. Although I'm sure there's something in my mail that I've sold. Okay, we have enough gold now. Let's go ahead and pick that RE up. That's going to be pretty solid extra damage. And I'm very happy to be one of the sole people that have it. But what I'm going to do to actually make my money back is I'm going to go ahead and extract this. Put it on three pieces of gear for 150 gold each. And then see if that sells. That nets me about 100 gold in profit. And I still get to use the RE. We'll see. It doesn't really cost me much because I have so many extra resources too. So... Okay, now we're the only ones selling this, and I know it was pretty rare on Fellforge mode, so let's see if these sell and we make our money back. At the very minimum, though, we can go ahead and put it on a piece of our gear now. And there we go, 20% up to 60% more overpower damage. That is freaking solid. I will take it. That basically makes us fully RE'd out. Some things just weren't available on the auction house, but I've basically gotten everything that I want. So I like it. I'm pretty happy with this so far. <laughs> actually just got an upgrade out of this legion fall cash with the night slayer boots man upgraded over my blood drenched foot pads we lose hit rating but we gain everything else we want it also gives me a two-piece bonus but it just reduces the cooldown of vanish which i don't even have nonetheless that's going to be a boost to my item level and a little bit more crit with basically the same ap but also more stamina i will take it nice little surprise didn't expect that things are going good most of the people we're finding are in the 5k range Kind of like the middle of my last video, that gear level. So I'm definitely benefiting from my grind, which I do enjoy. I've only seen one player who outgeared me and he ran from me. So really the main place you're going to find the super geared players is going to be in arena. Which in my opinion is a breath of fresh air because that means you can basically do whatever you want in PvP in the world. And you don't have to worry about too much. Unless you uh, are fresh and you see someone like this run up to you. And then I recommend you get the hell out of there ASAP if you can. I really enjoy what we're doing. Let's go look for more people, do more quests, and yeah, let's turn in Warrior of the Legion here too. That's going to be 50 more gold. All right, Warrior of the Legion. There we go. And we can actually pick up a brand new PvP quest, Dread Champion. Just got to kill five more players. Wow, that is a pretty cool epic enchant right there. Thief of Fate. Your pickpocket is transformed into pickpocket Thief of Fate, making it steal beneficial effects, but giving it a four second cooldown. Basically spell steal, but you don't have to wait till it comes out for real. All right, there is no Thief of Fate on the AH. I'm going to pop it on there for like 40 gold and see if somebody wants to play around with it. Could be fun. And I'm actually going to keep the Pestilence Epic Enchant that I PK'd off somebody. You know, overall, the guy that I got this from was a pretty low impact PK in terms of the loot. But um, because I got that Epic Enchant, I think it's worth it. At this point, I'm just going to be collecting the things that I think I could possibly use at any point in the future. And if I want to go for a Shadow Hybrid again, I might want Pestilence. You never know. Same thing with like Spalders of the Unseen. I'm going to take the multi-multi shot. I could see myself using that. And for example, these boots right here have the Hunter versus Wild enchant. That'll definitely sell for something. It's a pretty solid one. I know I wanted it and I had to buy it from somebody. All right, here's another person. Long Beard Boy. Friend up. Popping those cooldowns. Make sure the battle shouts up. He's already basically dead. Demolishing Strike. He dodges it. Overpower. There's a stun. Yeah, this guy's dead. GG, dude. GG. Let's see what we get. Okay, a bunch of blues. I'll take it. There might be something on that. Oh, there we go. Blood Forged Blood Fang Belt. That is pretty good, actually. All right, Trinket didn't have anything on it, but we can sell the belt for sure. The rest is basically stuff that I'm going to put on the auction house. So, GG, dude. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up.
And yeah, then it happened. I finally found somebody who was so crazily geared that they literally killed me in less than three seconds and there was nothing I could do. You know what? It's been happening the other way around, so I can't really be mad. But wouldn't it be nice if we could just play a game of WoW where everybody's on an equal playing field and really the only differences are minor? That would be nice. <laughs> oh man. Because it feels like the only time in WoW where PvP sucks is when somebody vastly outgears somebody else. And again, I was doing it to people too. I totally get it. Didn't make it any, uh, any better, you know? Anyway, this is good because this means we can start something new. We can either continue this build and continue to gear up. I have some stuff saved. I know how to make money. I'm not really worried about it. Or we could try something completely new. What do you guys think? But okay guys, that's gonna be the end of this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and to subscribe. I really enjoy playing Fell Forge mode. I know TBC is gonna be coming out like next week or this week, something like that, like the 14th. So that's pretty good as well. I'll see you guys then. But anyway guys, see you in the next video. McDoubles out.